General Roby, you're coming in. Begin transmission. Should you accept it now, here's your mission. Take your pilot seat and turn on your television. Logging into the Gundam Watch. What is the Gundam? We're gonna answer that question. From back in the classics to the newer expansion. Explore the lore with Dallas Moore and Branson. Welcome to the Gundam Watch. Moriagare, Moriagare, come and join 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 the Gundam Watch. Come and join the Gundam Watch. Brought to you by Geek Devotions comes another podcast to keep your feet in motion. Listen in close and see what's all the commotion. Logging into the Gundam Watch. Dallas and Branson bringing their fandom to you with the passion of the veteran instructing the new. We're diving deep, but the same these views and reviews. Welcome to the Gundam Watch. What is it, Haro? I'm working on my first draft of the very Gundam Christmas special. The guys need this by December 12th. What? There's a strange signal coming from the main communication console. Uh, let me go see what this is all about. That's strange. Looks like John is somehow broadcasting the conversation of the bottom shelf podcast from the main space station above the planet Geekery to Shiro base. What's the bottom shelf? It's another one of the podcasts that's part of the Geek Devotions Podcast Network. They typically review critical, terrible movies to decide if they really are as bad as people say. Hmm. Looks like they're reviewing... Robot Jocks? It must be part of the Megmas event that Geek Devotions is doing. I'll give it a listen. Maybe it'll inspire me for the Christmas special I'm writing. Or maybe it will give me a good warning of what not to do. I think it's mostly the when he would dress up in that green mm. outfit at night when he mm -hmm. thought no one was looking and he would dance around yeah. his little Stonehenge. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was moments like that just make my heart smile when I think about them. I mean, I don't, I don't. Hey miss the guys, smell. I'm back, suckers. Uh, What's up? How are you doing? I had such a grand, lovely time in Ireland, and I did not miss either one of you. You know what? When I went down to the pub that the movie Fatal Deviation was made. And I got some parts, and I saw the parts of the car that got scorched. Wow! Yeah, Kevo. Hey, what's up? It's about time. I was, I was, de I was starting to develop a depression every time. Every time I'd pour out a bowl of cereal to your memory. Is that why the oh. Lincoln Charms went out the airlock last week? Shush, 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 shush. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For real funny. I certainly didn't miss your casual racism for you, John. But you know what? I did brought gifts. I brought something for you, Ooh, you know, yes. because I'm trying to be nice and whatever. Here's some potato crisp for you guys. Um, I got salt and vinegar, smoked Ooh. bacon, and aged Irish cheddar. Smoked bacon, a aged Irish cheddar. What were was the cheddar aged in whiskey? No, no because I... you know, whatever, man. I'm, I'm trying to be nice. <laughs> I'm trying to be nice. No, it's cool. I, it's cool. I'm just gonna uh, eat this bag of chips over here. By, by the All way, right. dude, I uh, I wrapped a. I wrapped some uh, gifts for you too. So uh, here you go. Uh, oh, oh, also I, I can tinker with the taco machine now and I've what? made it so that we can broadcast our signal from here and from Shiro base wait, wait. at the same time. Wait, John, John, what are you doing with my taco machine? I just got to adjust this here. J John, no, John, extra guacamole on everything. That's John! right. And yeah, I'm back. Prepare yourself to discover a world of terrible movies. High above the planet Geekery, a group of intrepid explorers hover over the dangerous planet in their fabulous super-orbital spacecraft. Their mission? To conduct a complete analysis of movies known throughout the universe as Terrible. So grab your space popcorn, grab your freeze-dried ice cream, and join us for today's mission of Discovery and Wanda. Are these movies better than the galaxy thinks? Or do they really belong on the bottom shelf? Hello, welcome to the bottom 
show, the po- a podcast extension of Geek Devotions, show for devoted geeks who are devoted and know you're loved. We are the podcast that reviews terrible movies so you don't have to. I'm Dallas, and we're so glad to have you guys here with us. Whether you're listening to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you found this podcast, hey, welcome to the show. Ladies and gentlemen, we are joined by an amazing cast, an amazing crew. First and foremost, I want to say hello to my long-lost Irish friend, Mr. Kevin Joshua Burnham. Hey, buddy. Hi. Welcome back. We've missed you. I've been listening mm-hmm. to you too ever since you've left. Oh, that's a terrible day. Yeah, that's a very horrible <laughs> selection. Though. Why did you just, Why would you go to you two? There's so many grand others. <laughs> well, I, I just wanted to get the spirit of Bono because he's the... Ah, uh, screw that guy. <laughs> And then all those fake charities he goes to. Is that why you have all the Beano around also? I know. Uh, that's, le- that's left over from when Branson went on the Taco Bell Rager. That's true. You've missed a lot, man. And, the, and let me tell you, the fans have missed you. I doubt and that. We, we've I doubt all missed I miss you. anything. They have, you, you are well loved. They missed yeah. you like we're missing your beard right now. Just like how John mispronounces his favorite director's name, Jim Jarmusch. Because Ooh. he can't say that. Jarmusch? Yeah. Is a moose Ooh. in a drawer? The dead don't die. I was listening uh, to one of the backlogs. <laughs> it's like Jim Jarm Jarmace Jarm Jarm. It was like Jim Jarmace. I even know that, and I don't like him. Whatever. <laughs> well, Jim and Kevin's back, and yeah. we've missed you. And of course, we have here the amazing, the wonderful, Mister John Har. You who that? That's you. Oh, who are you? <laughs> I'm not even sure anymore. So, so, but anyways, Kevin, I believe that uh, John has has graced you with a couple gifts. I know. I, Are you I, excited? I'm shocked. Well, I don't get nothing for Christmas, so I'm, I'm kind of I don't know what to think about this, but I'm hoping that this is actually really good. Can I yeah. open up this box or this gift box, whatever it is inside? I mean, I don't know. John, are you cool with him opening his Christmas gift early? Oh yeah, go ahead. Okay, as long we're, as you guys don't we're, act we're, weird we're, if I open it in front of you. We're we're celebrating Irish Christmas, which uh, um, is different than regular Christmas. Yeah, yeah, because so, we're feeling Catholic at the moment. Sure. Okay, let me see. What's this inside there? No, it's pronounced Catholic. Okay, whatever. Let's see. Um, all right. And what <sighs> the frick? What's this? It's it's a movie. No. What? Wait. This is. I don't even know this. You love what? movies. You, it, yeah, <laughs> I got I got it out of the bin for you. I, I was, what movie I was hoping for. I was hoping for something that I like that I don't know. I don't know what. What's this? Robot jocks. What is robot jocks? I don't know. I don't know. What, what, what is this? this I thought you gave me a Christmas present. This is not a Christmas present. Bro, I just I gave you a piece of my childhood. Piece of your childhood. You know what? Whatever. I'm tired of crap. You already has sad and depression. Why are you sharing that with me? Okay. I was hoping for something good. Now I'm getting. Yeah, I forgot. I'm back in the bottom shelf. I watch crappy movies. What else do I have to do with my life here? <laughs> well, what is RoboJox? What does the box say? Uh, let's see what the bloody thing says. Okay. RoboJox is an Empire International Pictures studio. Okay. Let me see in the back. Okay, it says, released the 21st of November 1990 in glorious, amazing, non-dull color in 84 minutes. <laughs> it's rated PG for coarse language, violence, over-exaggerated accents, and nudity. PG. Okay. What year? 1990. Ah, uh, okay. Cool. This uh, makes sense. Um. Oh, there's some notes in here. Cool. From the late cult film director Stuart Gordon, who has made films such as Reanimator, Dolls, From Beyond, The Wonderful Ice Cream Suit. Oh my God, no. The, what? What is oh, that? Oh God. That sounds uh, like a very cold day. The Wonderful Ice Cream Man suit was like. It's, it was unapologetically racist with these Spanish people running an ice cream truck. And this man had the suit and he put on magical flavors of, oh my god, no. What, 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 what and Stuart Gordon, of course. To? Screenplay. Um, He did the screenplay for Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Oh, I like that one. Cool, but he did it for all the movies, so, wow. I didn't know he lived that long. <laughs> um, Sorry. John Hodderman's only film screenplay. Okay. Maybe that's saying something. Patrick Cox on his only stop motion behind the scenes while wow, another one and only done. But he has done roles for extras on films and television shows. 
<clears throat> also, like Mark Rappaport um, for the mechanical rigor and puppeteer. Okay, so this is telling me the stop motion and puppeteers. This man has has created effects for films such as Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Oh, yes. Tremors, Army of Darkness, and Three Hundred. Wow. And he this was his first film or one of his first. Hmm. This has promise. Okay. This has promise. Maybe, yeah, maybe he pulled promise. out a good one. Maybe John pulled out something yeah, good for us. Didn't you guys top shelf that freaking film? Which one? Killer Clowns from Outer Space. I, I think we might have. Hmm. See, when we didn't have you here, Kevin, we had a lot more leeway with uh, what we like. <laughs> Anyways, uh, this film is starring Jean Claude Van Damme look alike, Gary Graham, a woman named Anne Marie Johnson, a German born Canadian raised with a ridiculous Russian accent, Paul Koslow, Robert Sampson, Danny Kamekanone, from the other two robot movies, Robot Wars and Problem Child. A Slim Pickens extra stuntman, Michael Aldridge, and a bunch of extras from Total Recall. Okay. All right. Well, let's I'm guessing these. because it's a Canadian film, so there's a bunch of Canadian actors in Total Recall. So, yeah, it makes sense. Whatever. That makes sense. That makes sense. Let me, let me see this box. Let me see there, this. There, you have it. Here, go. All right. All right. Oh, there's some taglines. Wait, this is giant. Is this why we're broadcasting to Shiro bases because of giant robots, John? Uh... Wait a minute. Are you telling me all along this is not really truly a gift for me, but some way of shoehorning another podcast? Wow. Uh, Absolutely for the, pathetic. For, for the Gundam watch? Well, I mean, it just made sense because we're watching movies, but like it's Mechmas. So it, it is Mechmas here. Why not cross the two? Wow. All right. Let's let me read these taglines. Let's see here. Uh, this is literally the movie that made me not watch Gundam. Well, and this is what we're broadcasting out over the Gundam watch. Okay. <laughs> All right. The circle of life. Japan creates Gundam. Hollywood ruins it. What are we getting into, John? Um, Like I said, this was actually a piece of my childhood. So Okay. This is a movie... I watched. That comes from uh, Mr. Uh, ben Avery. Okay. <laughs> ben Ben. Ben Ben gave us that one. I mean, this e is a movie. Yeah, this is what we do with movies. We watch them, right? This is either, this that's either a, a statement of, of this is a good movie or this is a statement of like, yeah, this is going to be bad and you're, you're going to cry. I'm not it's almost like saying, hey, there's a door. I open this handle. It's like, yeah, no kidding. What else do you do I, with a door? Well, bro. Okay. So I, I read that more as a, I know I've seen this movie. I don't remember anything about it. <laughs> you know, like it's more saying it's a forgettable movie. Maybe. And then okay. lastly, we have now with PG nudity. Well, wow. yeah. Okay. This then. Nudity is really sticking out, isn't it? <laughs> Apparently. You know, John, I what mean, are we? I, th I think, <laughs> I think the PG in that statement was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John here, read the back of the box, man. So we know what we're getting into. Okay, Robot Jocks, uh, the massive killer machines of the future, driven from the inside by the world's greatest warriors. These incredible robot gladiators use their awesome size and computer weapons to fight each other to the death. Achilles is our country's mightiest fighter. Now he faces the three most dangerous challenges in life. He must attempt to crush his undefeated rival, the powerful Alexander, and try to uncover the traitor who is leaking top secret information to the enemy. But his greatest battle will be with his teammate Athena, a woman warrior bred to fight who will stop at nothing to take his place. Climb into the cockpit of a giant killer robot and take on the enemy in War of the Future. Well, I mean, it sounds promising. I mean, Do you honestly, see what the front of that VHS case says right there? What's that? Two men, two machines, too wild. What is this? Too fast, too furious, or something? Yeah, maybe it's maybe <laughs> it's, it's the robots. Prequel. Maybe it's robots gone wild. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> well, John, since you're the only one who knows anything about this movie, what's some trivia? Um, so let's take a look here. 
if I sound a little bit weird to everybody, it's because I broke my arm. So I'm on pain meds. Uh, let's start with the Mandela effect that I have about this movie. First of all, uh, okay. when we first found out we were doing this movie, I was like, hey, sweet. We're coupling up a bunch of Jean-Claude Van Damme movies uh, because we just done Street Fighter. And then I realized Jean-Claude Van Damme's not in this. And I could have <laughs> swore he was in this. Turns out uh, Stuart Gordon almost cast Jean-Claude Van Damme as the lead role of Achilles in this movie. Really? So, yeah. So, I mean, apparently there's some movement behind my Mandela effect, but. What's up with, with Jean-Claude playing, trying to play American heroes? It was his, it was, it was kind of his shtick during the nineties. Um, hmm. Like he was, you know, the, apparently a Belgian kick fighter was, or kickboxer was, uh, was uh, as American as apple pie. I so, mean, at least now we have like British actors who can actually sound American. Um, Looking at you, Superman. The, the, uh, the other yeah, thing about I guess this. I he passes a hero, but I was an American, huh? <laughs> Well, I mean, he, I don't think he that I don't think Jean Claude Van Damme can do an American accent to save his life. To be perfectly honest, or at least m- do it and make it sound natural. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just like it splits. <laughs> <laughs> and Dallas, before before the show, you and I were uh, chatting how, about how you almost watched the sequel to this movie. There actually wasn't a sequel to this movie. Uh, you were talking about a movie called Robot War, which is considered like the spiritual sequel. Uh, but they did have a, a, a true sequel uh, for Robot Jocks that was lined up and it was considered, but it got canceled. Um, apparently, Stuart Golden, Gary Graham and Paul Kelso uh, uh, would have uh, all returned as director and stars, uh, respectively. Um, but uh, apparently uh, the story was supposed to be about Achilles and Alexander teaming up to stop an alien invasion. Like, if that doesn't sound like someone jumping the shark, I mean, so what would that movie have been called as a sequel? <laughs> would it have been called, like, Robot Straps? Because, yeah, like, Jock Straps, you know, whatever. Jock Straps. Um, <laughs> uh, I think it probably would. I think this would have been the beginning of the uh, early 90s uh, subtitle craze for sequels. It had been, like, Robot Jocks independence day and then they would have like had will smith driving another one and i thought they be... would just invite the cast from meatballs into this <laughs> um and when you're listening to this it, when there's apparently a scene well i'm, I'm not going to pretend <clears throat> like i haven't seen this movie because this was from my childhood uh there was a there's a scene that's in this movie where there's a bunch of spectators that gets crushed by a giant robot uh that the screams of those spectators were actually sampled by nine inch nails in their song, the becoming. So that is a used sample. So this movie has made its way into the uh, music industry as well. All right. And then the original uh, company that was putting this movie out went bankrupt during the filming of this movie in the Uh, middle of filming it. Yeah, it was empire pictures. And this was the most expensive film they had ever made. Uh, And so they went bankrupt in the middle of filming it. The film was actually bought up by uh, Epic Productions and finished and released uh, almost entire two full years after uh, it had first gotten started getting made. Sounds like they should have swapped (laughs) S-Smart. Sorry. (laughs) So, So here's a question. Did they make their money back? Like obviously I the sequel it wasn't canc- greenlit. Well, sometimes sequels don't get made. Um, even if they didn't become successful, the first one, mm-hmm. as long as they, their tax money comes back, they can always go with a sequel. Mm. Because that's always the case there. So. Right. I'll, I'll be honest with you, Dallas. I don't have the financials on this particular movie. Um, I I can tell you, eighty nine people didn't really start paying attention to that stuff outside of the industry right um back in the 80s so i mean well this is 90s 1990 okay this was like yeah video store time oh no (laughs) yeah (laughs) 
That's more money than we've ever seen. That's all I know. It will always be more money than we've ever seen. No, nope, nope. I, I found I, I found the information. I found the information. Uh, our, thank you, Glix, for uh, speeding up my my uh, bandwidth here. <laughs> yeah, thanks, so Glix. I can find that. Um, this movie was budgeted at ten million dollars, and that that that's estimated. Um, that's a lot. Opening weekend when it came out because it, it it actually released on November twenty fifth of nineteen ninety. Okay. Opening weekend, it made $464,441 in opening weekend. So, it's worldwide gross to try to make back that $10 million that it was budgeted for. Right. $1,272,977. It it literally only made back a tenth of what its budget was. Yeah, that didn't do too hot. <laughs> it made just enough for tithing. <laughs> I was just thinking the same thing. That's about it. <laughs> That's a bad day. So yeah, you can see why there was no sequel is because there was mm, the this 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 movie hemorrhaged money and they didn't even have John Claude Van Damme's nose to thank for it. <laughs> hmm. all right well what are our expectations for the film guys i don't have any expectations because you know I, I don't know anything about this and i thought it was actually a nice gift until i found no this is just a freaking plug-in so whatever man bro get over it it's still a movie you can add it to your collection <sighs> whatever uh expectations for me is going to be bland on top of bland i saw this movie once in my childhood i re- the thing i remember most about this movie is it's advertising on tv really like like this movie was advertised non-stop on tv at least is this your childhood on- memory yes the, adver- the advertising uh, uh, did I you saw bring the- any commercials or any advertisements to go along with the movie no we got the Toys, whole movie we don't underwear need advertise- prince whatever <laughs> nothing what's, pr- what's prince got to do with it that's what i'm wondering now Purple you know, memorabilia, rain. pictures, Pur- prints. You, you know, oh, like prints. you get. Yeah. <laughs> you still, said, still gallery prints. prints. <laughs> we, we thought you were talking about prints, like you know, like purple rain. What? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It, let's move on. Uh, <laughs> so I saw the movie once, and I honestly didn't remember a lot about it. I remembered that there was a scene where a woman walks into a co-ed shower. Okay. And that's what is that? It. Starship Troopers. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Sorry. I've only seen that once as well, and that also don't remember a single thing about it. So I'm predicting a very bland movie, a movie equiv- equiv- a movie equivalent to uh, eating all-purpose flour. You're not making me feel very excited about my gift, man. <laughs> Kevin, what show are we doing right now? I know, but, you know, I thought you had, like, higher, you know, Goals, I'll send higher you, things to look up you know i'll like, send hey. you a nice gift here in a couple weeks kevin how about that will that make you feel oh. better i guess so I okay mean, sure I, i'll take <laughs> gifts at any time of the year it doesn't have to be christmas so here here's my here's my expectations <clears throat> so kevin brought the fact that there were some some legitimate like um practical effects going on some people who did some legitimate great puppeteering and some rigging and stuff like that a little bit of stop motion sounding stuff. I, I'm I like that kind of stuff. I'm intrigued. I like big robots. I'm looking at the back of the box though, and I'm not so sure my cousin didn't have a toy of one of these robots. Now that I'm I'm having a major like PTSD flashback moment here. I think my cousin had a toy of the the of this white red robot. I'm being for reals right now. Um, it looks like a transformer. They all look alike. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to say I'm going in with a, uh, well, I don't expect it to be good just from here <laughs> since it only made a tenth of its budget back. <laughs> 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 but, you know, it might be fun. It might be, it might be campy enough for me. So that's, oh, yeah. that's all. Okay. Something else. 
one of the so, guys who also worked on the, um, the stop motion puppeteers and everything else also worked on almost every single movie of John's favorite, um, the puppet masters. Hmm. They made why about like that, what, 25 of those movies. Why is that my favorite? You like all those um, weird, stupid, cheesy 80s horror films. Stuff. Dude, I do have a soft spot for 80s horror, and I do have the first 10 Puppet Master movies. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was, I was halfway there. <laughs> but here, here, here's here's the thing, though. I've only watched the first one. Um, I got I got it as one of those combo packs you get at Walmart for like 10 bucks. Oh. And it's just like all te- first 10 Puppet Master movies for 10 bucks in the same case. And I'm like, how very Dave Ramsey of you. How Kevin, you should be proud of him. <laughs> I'm actually, I, I, I think I want to be proud, but I don't know if I should. Be proud. <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, let's go watch this movie, and then we'll we'll get into it. Yeah, come on, Glicks, play the movie. Dear listeners, this is your opportunity to escape. Our crew has just entered into the media projection chamber. What horrors and madness that they consume are unknown. Their mental state upon their return is unknown. You have been warned. So coming out of that, I will say that there are, this is a perfect example of there are things that you cannot appreciate at the time of a thing that you learn to appreciate more as you get older. Because it's not, because it's, it's not a thing at the time uh what i'm referring to is 80s 1980s retro futurism yes i'm I'm gonna i'm gonna sit here right now and say that's my first positive thing about it i have a love for that 1980s future future retroism that you talked about retro there's something there's something about that like when you see futuristic stuff but has all the retro stuff to it at the same time it there's a i don't know there's there's a joy that I have when I see that kind of stuff. There's a, it I, gives a like a texture to that world. I I am very much the same way. I love retro futurism. Like it's the same reason why I have such a soft spot for the original RoboCop movies. Mm-hmm. Um, and so like when I first saw this movie, because it was so next to the eighties, it wasn't retro futurism at the time. It was just, Hey, this is what the future looks like. Right. You know? So, but like even like some like that stuff you see like played into like like the first alien movie and um yeah there are sure. several other movies out there it's just it gives a texture to the world and that's what i like oh, so oh, dude the, the 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 ultimate 1980s retro future mo- retro futuristic movie blade runner oh yeah absolutely and i think that the part of the reason why is because that stuff right there it it grounds the world for the viewer. Sometimes things are so futuristic and so clean and crisp that there's a disconnect. It's like uh, the difference between uh, the first Independence Day and the sequel. The first Independence Day was just grounded enough in the real life that people were, were into it. The sequel is so futuristic and so it, it just it, it's a terrible film in comparison to the first one. And so I appreciated that this world that created uh, within Robo Jocks, it had that that I don't know. There was a texture to it. There was this that 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 just grabbed you. Um, you could watching it. I go and I can see how somebody in 1982 or 1988 uh, when they were produ- producing it will go. Yeah, this is what it'd be like in the future. So, what what are some other spoiler free thoughts we got? Crash and burn. <laughs> Crash and burn. <laughs> Crash and freaking burn. Oh my. God, if I said it one more freaking time, I was going to lose my mind. There, there are so many things that this movie 35 said. 35 times. Crash and had, burn. They had no explanation for these things. <laughs> like, like that phrase specifically. Like, what was the point of that phrase? Again, we're in the spoiler free uh, thought process here, but there was no explanation for, for so many things. That's like us telling John to break arm. Break it. Wait, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> wow dude In, literal insult to injury <laughs> that's what i'm here for <laughs> anyways oh, you know what this film has this film has like all the elements out of peter verhoven film but none of the satire or actual commentary it was like it was completely missing it was like they were trying with one spot but it never went any further or went anywhere else mm. 
that's because there was a big conflict over the script on this movie. Yeah, I could see that. Um, where did I put it in my notes here? Notes. Running through my notes. Oh man, he's You've got been... notes, dude. He's <gasps> been having notes for days, bro. When so... you left the country, and he's just like, "I will embody the Kevin." And he's been writing this for everything. <laughs> and I don't think he wanted to do that too much. So Joe Halderman and Gordon Stewart, when they were writing this, the issue was that Halderman wanted to make this more dramatic uh, with uh, like a more dramatic, serious science fiction film. Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, Gordon wanted to kind of splash it up with stereotypes and cartoonish characters. Just and his style. And and basically every time Halderman would change some change the science into something reasonable, or you know make something serious in there, uh, uh, Stuart would go basic basically go back in and and make it a character of itself again. Um, so like any any time one would try to make it believable, uh, the other one would insist on putting in characters and cliches. Um, and it it was. Uh, really frustrating to joe halderman because out of everybody involved with creating it he was the only person who had ever been a soldier and he was mm. trying to make the story about the soldiers um and yeah so like there there were there was uh that there was very big disagreements on, on what kind of movie they were making and i think that's part of the part of what contributed to the overall blandness of this movie mm -hmm. uh was the fact that you had one person who wanted to go super serious you have one person who wants to go uh kids movie that adults can enjoy right and you know what do you, if the only middle ground you're gonna find there is just bleh. oh yeah i'm definitely gonna pick this movie for my niece and nephew to watch with me <laughs> <laughs> definitely yeah i i did appreciate a few of the um the uh and this is uh, this is a good thing and a bad thing. Some of the stop motion I enjoyed, and then some of it I didn't. Like it was inconsistent, and I don't know if it's part of that the the fighting they had back and forth with some stuff. But like like there were moments where I was like, this isn't bad for a nineteen eighty nine movie. And then all of a sudden there was like, are they in the Toys R Us aisle and they just knocked over some kid's toy? Like what's happening in the scene? And so like there are times where I was like, yes, and then there are times where I was just like this is a failure. Like is there so much inconsistency throughout the entirety of the film of quality? There was a reason why Ray Harry Halson was the king and master of stop motion because I was, was just about to bring him into that conversation. <laughs> I mean, you could tell I have by watching you this, so much, Kevin, this, <laughs> this stop motion was horrendous. I don't know what you thought was nice. Not one stop motion scene was nice to me at all. I love was, when they did the actual like on set creativity. That mm -hmm. was that was great, actually. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'm going. To, I know whatever spoiler. Who, I don't give a crap. This whole movie is a spoiler. The beginning of this movie, I like. I like the opening of this movie. Yes, that the was credits, the point. The the score, the how how it just opened up. It's like this is a great opening, and it just went poof, right after that. So what? I'll tell you what, because I feel like none of us have anything to say that's not spoiler. Is that is that? Am I correct in that? Is there anything we have um, to say is spoil? Build. I do. I I do have one thing I want to make a comment on real fast. Okay. Um, what, Only if it's which really was, fast. Dude, shut up. <laughs> um, I so this was during the time period where if any character ever came from Texas, they needed to be overly stereotypical Texas character. Yeehaw, shoot my guns in the air and give me steak while I drill for oil, Texas. What are you talking about, boy? Let's go get the pickup truck right down there and get some cows. Yeehaw. Oh, jeez. And I will, <laughs> I will say the character Tex. That's right, everybody. There's a character Name named Tex. Tex in this movie was just so hammy with how they approached writing his character. Like you want to talk about people who put in caricatures, you know, like what we're talking about with them fighting on that script. That's where you're going to see it the most because that guy was so unbelievable as an actual person. They should use some pickings instead. What's that? 
They should have used Slim Pickens instead. <laughs> okay. Uh, 10 points to Dallas if you can tell me who Slim Pickens is. No idea. Shame. Shame. <laughs> Spoiler section. Ladies and gentlemen, the spoiler section. All right, Kevin, we're letting you off the chain. Go to it. Because war is not outlawed, but we you know when we when when has war ever been legal? When Thank you. is war? Thank you. Ever oh legal? Oh my gosh, that's the first note I have <laughs> in my notes. How do you outlaw war? What is happening here? What is it good for? Absolutely <gasps> nothing. Yeah. Except for making money. Yeah, and rush hour. So I have a theory. I have a theory. <laughs> uh, first off, I firmly believe that. This film was like the scripting was 90%. Let's talk about the Cold War. And the they were trying to talk about the fact that people are marketing, making money off of the fear and the anxiety and everything else of the Cold War. Ironically, they were trying to do the same thing with this film. They yeah, so failed. cold, they fight for freaking Alaska. <laughs> Who wants Alaska? That's the I one mean, thing we want to fight over. Bro, Let's fight I, against I, the I, land of the most frigid, darkest, isolated land with moose, beavers, and well, that's beer the thing. fountains. During, during Alaska. the Cold War, Alaska was 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 was, was a major fighting zone because if Russia can get can get a foothold in Alaska, man, they they are they're going to march straight down and grab us. I mean, have you never played Risk? This is a very common thing. Not and not only that, <laughs> but it, it, yeah, everything everything was paranoia. But I will say, as a tactical from a tactical standpoint, Alaska is huge mm -hmm. because uh it has oil at like almost like more oil than texas yeah but it also has like they say in the movie a lot of the mineral deposits untapped mineral deposits as far as like gold it, it silver, is a uh, it is a huge space to grab hold and this and ice the, has loads of ice well uh, yes but underneath that ice but that's the reason why we have we fought so hard to maintain that that piece of land for so long and but this whole film was purely a let's take the cold war to a futuristic state a futuristic place this is like the the nuclear war that they talked about that was the conclusion of the cold war so and out, out of that people are making resources. yeah Sorry. and out of that people are like let's make money now off of the fear by having sanctioned fights between countries and Sounds like walt disney <laughs> and then have at the same time gambling rings based around these these international fights that we're having like this whole thing in my opinion was a big hey this is how terrible things are happening with the cold war and our government and other individuals are simply taking advantage of our fears and our anxieties about it it's a good thing that we this movie came out and warned us about that so we could curtail that behavior before <laughs> oh wait <laughs> that's basically every year <laughs> since, you're, since, you're, since you're talking about like fear um the film like i said it's a mind thing? killer <laughs> <laughs> sorry <Okay, James>. <laughs> anyhow <laughs> since you're talking about fear and all that i think it was trying to touch on it. this is why when i was saying earlier about it feels like a like it should have been a peter verhoven film but it doesn't have the actual commentary or satire inside of the film is that it talks about the, how valued women are for pregnancy, but it never explores why. Mm -hmm. Like, was there a disease? Was there a population overgrowth? Was men choking to death on pie? You know, <laughs> what? Nothing. It doesn't go any further. It doesn't this explain is, nothing. This is what we feeling. were talking about. Being, Sorry, go on, John. I, I was just about to say, I have a feeling that there's an uncut version of this movie that's about twice as long floating around somewhere in a, in a vault that probably goes a lot deeper and probably is a little bit more enjoyable. I, I would hope so because like what we said at the beginning of the show, there's so many things that they said or did with so little explanation. You don't understand why they're pushing things. You're left to kind of assume like, okay, so maybe nuclear fallout still a problem, you know, and, and go, kind of going back to my idea that this is a, a, a film about the exploitation of people's fears, and anxieties, I think that the push for people to have pregnancy, because one woman, she said that, you know, if we have six kids and we get three bedrooms, 
And, like, and there's signs okay. everywhere that say about, you know, hey, you know, basically having designer babies, you know, how get pregnant to develop jocks. The government's Wait, almost subsidizing Was it, it government funded? It didn't even say it was government funded. They just like, we get this like, from who? Who's providing this? Wait, does this movie exist in the same universe as Gattaca? Mm. I think it's a a dystopian timeline of Gattaca, which is already pretty dystopian of itself. I would say it's a divergent timeline of Gattaca. And the other thing with it, uh, it was saying like um, how there was so much um, against women to be in war. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess especially since she she is grown. They breed these women to go on um, the what's it the androids? I don't know what you call them now. The they were clones? tubies. Tubies. I mean, they were grown for this battle. Was, this they was at the same time, yeah, and 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 trained for battling, but not for breeding. So it just felt like while was, this was very comical to me, it was also very sexist. That was quite apparent oh, yeah. in this at all. Oh, I'm blankly it, sexist. The amount because of sexism time, in this was just over the top. It's like the whole topic, like they had something there. They just never fully explored or explained what they're they're like, here's an idea. Here's an idea. Here's an idea. I was like, okay, anything comes further with the idea? Nothing. (laughs) It's almost like, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to hearken back to my high school experiences. Mm -hmm. Uh, When I was in high school, it was also before I became a Christian. I hung out with the stoner crowd. Mm hmm. And when you would hang out with those guys, they would come up with these thoughts and, and they would be like, man, have you ever thought about, and they would just throw something out there. How deep uh, the hole is on the black hole. It's like, what? Huh? <laughs> you know, you know, just, just stuff like that. And it's like Kevin said, it'd be like, here's an idea. Mm-hmm. And I felt like that's what this movie was doing. It, it wasn't really interested in the ideas out, out there. It was just like, just every so often in the script, it'd be like, man, have you ever thought about what it would be like if Russia, if we like did a David and Goliath fight where it was all between two people, but it was in robots. <laughs> like, I feel like that might've been the, the script writing moments right there. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's just, it's just with all these other collective ideas. Like, man, have, yeah. do you ever think about like if they bred people specifically for war, but like one was a girl? No, a girl? Oh my gosh! Think of the flexibility, the possibility she could fight in war. But what if like the patriarchy didn't want her to fight because she's a girl, but they made her? Then what? Whoa, man, that's like totally wild. And like, that's based no men. And, and and that's that's basically the gist I get from what Kevin's talking about. It's just they weren't interested in exploring the ideas they were having. They just wanted mm-hmm. to throw those ideas out there and be like, have you ever thought about that? Cool. Or the biggest idea in this movie, the biggest one, robots. Why robots? Why freaking humongous whatever transformer godzilla kaiju sized robots with because one man can, inside each machine to fight why why can't why can't you just have him boxing just do it you know, knuckle you, bear style white knuckle it's, style, e- it's easier to market it that way it, it's stupid what a stupid idea <laughs> we're gonna fight war's not legal but hey we'll make war legal as long as it's robots well, again, it's all I mean, market. At again, least make it at least add some satire or comical and put some like bumper stickers like, hey, this is being funded by 76 gas station. Get your petrol here. <laughs> right, right. Don't like, get have, Exxon because that'll ruin Alaska. Honestly, if this mo- if this movie wanted to make back some of its budget, it should have done project product placement by having companies sponsor the robots. Yeah. Uh, if they were to remake this film today, that's exact if they were smart, that's exactly what they would do. And now it would become a much more political conversation and like uh, to begin with, if they did all that. But oh, I can I can promise you that if this movie was made today, Achilles would have been played by a female actress. Oh, sure. Yeah. Absolutely. I kind of wish they would put some golden arches over that robot. That way it gets like, <laughs> we, we fight for billions and billions. And the name of his robot would be called Big Mac. <laughs> <laughs> But the rings would glow when they would shoot beams from them. 
No, but they'd be practical. <laughs> no, they would just pull them off Holy and use them as razor boomerangs. <laughs> he pull out some fridge fry swords. <laughs> Gets out a big straw. He's like, I can tell you, you can do with this oil. You can suck it. And then get the big huge straw. <laughs> McDonald's call us up. We got a plan for you. <laughs> hey, who are those guys? Bombshell podcast. Let's, how much can we sue them for? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> they can sue us for everything that we have, which is nothing. Zero. <laughs> if you have questions, please see John Haru. All right. <laughs> I, I will just repeat your questions back at you, except in my stoner voice. Like, have you ever thought about parodying some fast food chain in context to a slightly sexist Cold War robot movie? Uh, we don't know about that. They're naked. Oh, right. Money. <laughs> well, since we're, we're broadcasting out to the Gundam Watch uh, feed at the same time, Let's, let's talk about these robots. This is like the, I, I just don't even understand why they thought this was a good design setup for these robots. Like what inspired that these are how robots should look like in that time frame? Like Transformers, boxy, yes, but they were still far sleeker than these things. Like these things moved like molasses. Um, I think it's just for design. They were terrible designs. And they're like, <laughs> like home dude, like, he gets hit, and I'm like, you you clearly have, like, traction on the back of your legs to transform. Why don't you just go into that form if, to fight? Because well, there was one part that transformed but, was right between the legs. That I was, was about inappropriate. To, I, I was about to say, because then we wouldn't have been able to look at Alexander's crotch saw. Yeah. Like, it just, like, none of the design choices made sense. The only design choice that I appreciated was the way they piloted it was the... Uh, where they were actually standing up and walking in tandem with the robot. That's the only design choice that I appreciated about the whole ordeal. Everything I else. Know, I know Guillermo del Toro stole that idea to make a far better film. But at the same time, like when like, all right, so when Achilles in that first battle gets hit and he falls backwards and like, he's like clearly bent over backwards in a situation that that would have broken your back regardless. I'm going, you guys know that this is a very easy thing to take place because I mean, it just is. Why didn't you design this cockpit to protect them a little better when they fall backwards? Like that just the design didn't make sense at all. It's the same reason why you put the audience out there right next to Dallas. them fighting in the freaking field. It's because the design was created by movie makers, not robot makers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. it's just I mean it was just plot. I mean it was it was purely just a plot device to uh you act like you haven't seen movies from the 80s and early 90s ever, dude. It It's shallow. We had this conversation about 80s movies already when we were talking horror films. That's true. You can have fun shallow. This isn't really much of a fun I, I get shallow it. film. I get it, but it, it, still, it still fits that it was the time period it was made. They mm -hmm. made shallow movies that was all, all sizzle, very little steak. Right. Well, at least the films I have in my collection actually have a point. I mean, some of them. Okay, not all of them, but at least there, there had to be some point. There was There's no at least point four to points on every one of your movies. I mean, at least the boxes. Yeah. But <laughs> He's I mean, looking around his boxes. to be to be to be fair, this this movie did have a point. It, it was very much a commentary on the Cold War. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, and very it, weak commentary. Like I yeah, it was so weak, it was like it, what it made us, was it really. It, it made its point at the end, though, that we can coexist despite the fact that we don't agree with each other. I mean, that was sure. really the biggest thing that was being said. Right. Now, funny enough, the next year after this movie was made, the Cold War was over and the Berlin Wall fell. So, I mean, right. Maybe that but, robot was real. Maybe it did maybe crash that wall. Did, did robot jocks save the world? Did it end the Cold War? Maybe with the help of the Texas man, because <laughs> I'll see you in hell. I'm like, I, I cried. I'm going to say I cried with laughter when he when he came out and he jumped out and said Geronimo. Okay. <laughs> in the most Tex Avery cartoonish way ever. When he gave that thumbs up and said that, I'll see you boys in hell, or I'll see you in hell, and jumped out, I cried laughing. Do you I know what that reminded me of? With laughter. What was that? That reminds me of that Stanley Kubrick comedy 
Doctor Strange, I'm Doctor Strange, Strange love, love, or how I love Stop oh, Worrying yeah. Little Bomb. Uh, when, when, that, when that dude, when that dude rides that atomic bomb all the way down, fan yeah. with his hat. Was that Slim Pickens? Okay, I've watched that movie a couple times. Never got the name. So, what what other opinions do we have here now that Kevin has derailed us? I, I, one of the things I there were so many like the movie just bounced so fast through so many things like when Achilles um, at the beginning he's like you know he's so against this this woman and he's so angry at her like when like she um, he wakes up the next morning after completely being hammered and she's in there and they have this big fight and he's like you don't know me da, da, da. he's very angry at her and then literally the next scene there's a level of care and concern for her and like he's like yeah you know you got this I'm like there was literally no storytelling to tell me how he bridged the gap from this point to that point. And it was just, there were so many big gaps. I really hope there is a, a, um, something out there, a, a pre-script that was written out there that explained some of these holes, just so we understand the world that's taking place here. That's what happens when the alcohol wears off. He's like, Oh yeah, I should care and love you <laughs> or like well, you. Also, I mean, every every action hero from the 80s, there had to be some woman that falls in love with him by the end of the movie. I mean, mm -hmm. that's I, about the only one I can think of that didn't end that way was the first Predator. Mm. And even still, you could say he still kind of got the girl at the end when he helped the Asian lady escape. Mm -hmm. So, I mean... Did There's this movie always... actually had a love story? Mm. I don't think it. I mean, it felt like it should have, but it stopped. They, like it never went. Were, like it tried to, but didn't. They were trying to crowbar in the whole relationship between him and uh, Athena. Athena. Okay, but it felt like they did try to, but then it's like, no, let's not do that. Which I'm thankful yeah. they didn't. But at the same time, again, it was like... there's just so many false starts to things and so many random things. Like let's let's randomly fly into space for no good reason. Oh Fly my god. And land in the exact <laughs> oh my same god. place we started off at. Let's talk about that space scene for a moment. <laughs> I I watched that and I'm like, why are we doing this? <laughs> why, wa why not? Why fight on land? We can fight in space. You got the capability. But he, wasn't, he was just like flying. It's like He's, you were you were at the winning point and you're just like, let's take off. I'm going to go out into outer space. Like, it was literally like, hey, we had this in the budget. You want to do this real quick? Yeah, sure. Why not? That's kind of Texan to do. I, I just, I couldn't. I'm sitting here staring at this. N at, at no point did they ever say that these things could go into space. This was just something no. thrown in there to do it, just to do it. Yeah. Right. And and then they land in the, it's like, we, we go up into outer space. You shoot my foot off. And now I'm going to land in the same exact place I was flying away from. The same like, exact space. At least go into water. Away. Go somewhere else. Go somewhere <laughs> else. Like, it just made no sense whatsoever. And now I will say this about the final fight scene. The one the one very Gundam thing they did is they made the bad guy much bigger in the last fight than he was in the bat, in the first fight. With his, like, ten legs that were suddenly just everywhere. <laughs> And and crotch <laughs> chainsaw, crotch chainsaw too. <laughs> so you know what else was, did not make any sense? I didn't understood the hmm. jungle gym scene with the electrocution. Yeah. What was the point of that? It was, uh, it was like, Professor hey, X's. You're, you're... It was Professor X's danger room. <laughs> <laughs> and it was real dangerous. <laughs> I mean, that's literally what it was. If you read like the old, like not like the new X Men, but if you go back to the like the first issues of X-Men, if you get your hands on an omnibus that has like the first oh, yeah. five or first eight X-Men comic books, mm -hmm. that's literally what the danger room looked like. Yeah. The only thing I can, I can think of Kevin is it was, it was a test people's stamina and strength, but even that didn't make sense to me. Like this, like one of the things I've noticed, like why were we so concerned about teaching these guys Kung Fu? You weren't doing Kung Fu in these robots. None whatsoever. You, you were awkwardly walking and pressing buttons that were labeled by the type of fruit that the color related to dude, because you can't read dude all robot fighting in this movie was just a series of quick time events 
<laughs> Whatever. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> Pickle. Banana. Orange. Chris <laughs> Farley all. moved faster than these freaking robots. It was. It was just he a would do somersaults around them. <laughs> Th this this was literally this was literally a movie version of a uh what's it? What was that studio that did just stare story movies that you were quick time events? Oh, um Telltale. Yeah, this movie was a, a, a Telltale movie. But I enjoy Telltale. I enjoy Telltale. <laughs> not not the werewolf among us, but all the others, like the Walking Dead. The Batman Dead was pretty lit, I'm not gonna lie. So, yeah, the Batman, that was really oh, good. But that's like but like nothing like all right. The 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 let's talk about the fighting, the kung fu, and then the fight at the end. Their fighting made Street Fighter look high quality. Like that's how terrible their fighting was. There was so much projecting. There was so much. Dallas like, is just trying to hurt feelings. No. Don't some of the don't move. Saying. Let me punch you. Oh. Yeah. Wait. Here we go. They're killing her. They're it, like, killing her. Like I, I half expected them to go. Oh, pause, 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 pause. I need to figure out my special move. A B <laughs> A A B C. I mean, like literally, I, it just was so terrible. The moment Dallas said C, we realized he was playing on a Genesis. <laughs> yeah. Heck, I yes, would, I was. I did want to know the Russian guy's backstory. Why he that wanted was, to kill everyone so bad. He, he I really say, had a bad story. He's just like, again, I want to kill you. Kill you. It's like, why? Why do you want to kill him so bad? Because he was Russian. Thought, that's literally how they thought Russians were in the Cold War. Mm -hmm. Vodka! I put... Vodka in my cereal. I put vodka on my steak. I put vodka on my vodka. Um, Russian. <laughs> but I, I will say he was a compelling character, uh, more so than any of the ones that we were supposed to be rooting for. Yeah. And I was mm -hmm. more interested in what was going on with him. Mm -hmm. Wh whoever acted in as Alexander in this movie, I don't have the I don't have the crew pulled up on my screen right now. But whoever played Alexander Paul Kozlo, he was the best actor in this movie like I my two favorites in this movie is the bipolar opposites it's the russian well actually he, he's, he's actually a canadian german born canadian whatever him and mm -hmm. the texas guy those two were my favorite because there were so <laughs> much i, I could just have fun with the texas guy by all of his over exaggeration and everything that he did he was complete opposite from everyone else and just like the russian guy he was complete opposite from everyone else i'm like Everyone else was just basically bland. Even the Jean Claude I, Van Damme looking like he was bland as crap. I can't. I can't get behind Tex. I can't. Oh my gosh! I had a, he, I had a he fun sounds, time with. He, he sounds like too. what it sounds like whenever somebody from the UK tries to do an American accent. He, that's what he. That's what they end up sounding like. He yeah, was, but he, he, he looked like he had fun. He looked like he had fun doing it. He was hamming that role, and I was he like, was man, I am so glad that you actually went complete opposite if you were from what the directors version if it was because he was so recognizable he was someone you could stood out and i was like you know what he knows he's in a bad movie he's going to give it his all <laughs> he's gonna ride that bomb down waving his cowboy hat. <laughs> <laughs> so, just to talk about how bad the like how like nobody was anybody in this film um my dude that played achilles has been in a thousand things mm -hmm. but nothing big like it's all bit parts. He was a a character in Jack. He was an alienation, so that's kind of cool. Um, but he was in one of the what's probably gonna have to be in the next season of of our show. Um, Steel. It's like you already know what movies are in this dumpster. <laughs> Why are you going to dumpster diving? Since you know all these movies inside. Like, like he was in Steel, which, if, if for those of you who are listening, uh, Steel was supposed to be a great. Uh, I was excited about Steel because I love the character Steel in in Superman. This Wait, was not that character. Steel, not mm -hmm. real Steel. No, no, steel. not Blue Steel. No Steel. Not Steal Away Your Heart. Nope, Steel. Steel. Still, still. Still, still, still. Not <laughs> Hattori Hanzo Steel. Nope, Steel. Hmm. Okay. That sounds what? like a very interesting title of a movie, just called Steel. Like, what kind of steel? Or like, we're stealing like a thief, like James Conn thief steel, or what? Like John Henry Steel. Oh, like steel um, the metal. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. 
Okay. Uh, what what is this? I what, you know whatever. <laughs> Do we have anything else to talk about with this film? This is one of the dumbest endings for a film ever, too. How does the movie start with one of the best beginnings of a film with the dumbest ending ever? I mean, it, it kind of went downhill from the front to the end, so it makes sense. I mean, it was like uh, I'm surprised he didn't say crash and burn like another ten more times at the end with a <laughs> thumbs up and it's like, oh yeah, you know how you killed all these people and everything else. It's all forgiven. It's all cool. Whatever. We're best friends or something. Well, that was like the, the thing. Like, like you, you, you understood that people were basically there was some sort of contractual reason for them to fight. We're not sure what it was, but there was a contractual reason. But we never saw why that was. We never saw what the benefit of being a fighter, a jock, was for these people. No, you just you just reminded me of something. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not trying to cut your point short, Dallas. Mm. But it, it, a thought just occurred to me. Um, early on in this movie, when he's trying to get out of his contract because he did his ten fights, mm -hmm. the guy in charge was like, "You can't even read your contract." Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, later on in the movie, he has a loadout for his robot. Mm -hmm. that he's holding in his hand and reading <laughs> i didn't think about that till just now i i completely <laughs> forgot part was so you're you're not wrong <laughs> he's reading instructions but he can't read when he's in the cockpit they have to go okay hit the green button it looks like a pickle <laughs> okay <laughs> I completely forgot because he, uh, he can only read when it's plot relevant is what I'm saying. Is and that what we call plot armor? No, that's what we call bad writing. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was another very apparent thing in this film. Very bad writing. Mm -hmm. The dialogue between each other, especially in that bar, it was so pathetic and bad. It was like, but who's who? It's like they could just say anything. They could just blurt out whatever and they're like, okay, yeah, that's a thing. It's like, whatever well boys yeah. let's give her a final rating on this film you can always tell when we get to that point because there's that brief just awkward silence where we stare at each other and being we just like, feel defeated yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's the moment where we try to sweep up the remnants of our uh sanity dignity <laughs> Finish him. <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's go ahead and hit those ratings for the uninitiated out there. The rating system goes as follows. First, we have the top shelf, which is a fantastic movie. And we believe that the uh, poor connotations that are directed towards this movie are unfounded. Most people will probably enjoy this. And this would be one that we would put on if we were to find out we had a visitor who hadn't seen it before. A Middle Shelf is a movie that we find to be somewhat enjoyable. We can understand why people would think this was a terrible movie, but we don't necessarily uh, agree with. Uh, it might be enjoyed by some very specific individuals. And, you know, depending on who's around, we might watch it. But it's not for everybody. Then there's The Bottom Shelf. Yes, this is a bad movie. Uh, some people may enjoy it, but it's not us and probably not most of the people that we know. And then finally, there's the dumpster fire. My favorite spot, which is a movie that is so egregious, it needs to be wiped from existence in all parts of the timeline. And as far as we know, no movie has ever made its way to the dumpster fire. Really? Yep. No movie? No movie has ever been there. Because it wipes it from existence. <laughs> really? Hmm. Yep. Interesting. Yep. All right. Well, let's let let's start this parade here, Dallas. Let's start with you, being as you are, you are the Gundam granddaddy mecha maniac. Yeah. So for me, all right. So legitimately, like. It's not a good movie. And <laughs> <laughs> it's just just not a good movie. <laughs> and so um I wanted to I wanted to like it. 
uh, I have a sp soft spot for stop motion. I have a stop a soft spot for um, the re retro futurism in giant robots, but it's not good. I don't think it's dumpster fire worthy. Um, I w I feel like I've definitely seen films that are worse than this over the years, um, but this is not a. Now I will say this: I did at the end of it kind of want to watch Robot Wars, like the the spiritual successor to it. I kind of wanted to see it, so I'm gonna say bottom shelf. Really? Okay that 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 was not what I was expecting from you. So that, that no. was interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, I I I feel like I know where Kevin's where Kevin's about to go with this, but Kevin, why don't you lay it on us as far as your opinion of this movie? Well, the stop motion in this movie is far more distracting than any blue screen effect on in here. Light, the fight scenes are completely forgettable and horrendous, and they're also quite boring. Mm. Um, oh, question. Did you know if you jump to the ground, you instantly create an invisible shield that will confuse anyone shooting ammunition at you from higher ground? <laughs> True. Just figured, you know, because that's a thing, too. I just forgot about. <sighs> um, You know, it's... It, this film is just completely stupid, dumb, and I, I really, it, I I appreciate when a movie tries for production value, and when they do have some good actor in the movie, which was the one, well, two for me. One was fun and dumb. The other one was trying to do a series, the Russian guy. The music was horrible. I, I, I do know that. I'm very fond for scores, and this score was horrible. But it wasn't it wasn't so bad where I I hated everything in this movie because I, there was some things I did, did enjoy the production value I didn't enjoy the stop motion but I did enjoy the production value I did enjoy some things that were trying to get even though they weren't pointing it out it's just it's like a movie you play in the background just to let it play out so I'll just put it on the shelf it's not I've seen worse things in my life mm -hmm. I mean it was almost there but if it wasn't for those two guys in this film. Mm -hmm. I definitely, I think I would have thrown this in the fire if it wasn't for the Texas guy, if it wasn't for the Russian guy. Right. <laughs> if it wasn't for those two, this thing would have been totally, you know, dumpster fire for me. So communism is your thing, huh? Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> um, as far as I go, um, it was, it was, it was fun for me to, it was fun for me to kind of recall that piece of my childhood. Yeah. Um, I, I and I do have a soft spot for retro futurism, that retro futuristic aesthetic. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I, I I can I can endure some pretty terrible movies to watch <laughs> as long as as long as they're set in a re, in a uh, 80s 90s retro futuristic setting. Mm -hmm. Love it. It's it's my flavor of garbage. Um but it's like you said, this movie is not good. <laughs> not good. I, you know, I, I found a lot of the things they tried to do in this that should have been eye popping was just bland. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it was. I mean, if, if I want to bring in a biblical reference right now, it 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 was the it was the church in Revelation that was lukewarm. <laughs> I I just I I, I want to vomit it out, and <laughs> the, I, I'm kind I'm kind of with Kevin. Like there was a part of me where it's just like there are a few elements that are just keeping me from dumpster firing this thing. Mm -hmm. Um. And and obviously this movie left a mark on me early on because that's it's literally the reason why I never tried watching any Gundam anything until mm -hmm. th this year. So that's what thirty two years of m missing out on Gundam because of one movie. Mm -hmm. So uh, so that being said, be, just for the retro futuristic aesthetic alone, as well as the russian character in this movie which i found to be incredibly compelling i'm gonna give it a bottom shelf all so right we are unanimous on this movie sweet interesting 
Yep. So for us here at the bottom shelf, it's a bottom shelf. Unanimously, which is almost never a thing. So, all right, let's get on over to the weak connections and see if anybody was able to pull a nugget of gold out of this dog turd. This is a weak connection. All right, everybody, welcome to the weak connection section of this episode, which is a, a concept that we stole from my friend Ben Ben Avery. Um, and basically, we try to find some kind of spiritual aspect that we can take out of this movie uh, in hopes of being able to share some sort of Christian <clears throat> truth with friends when we watch this movie. Or, you know, perhaps even just to edify ourselves. Uh, While stealing from another podcast. That sounds with very permission. Edifying. We have permission. So that's borrowing. No, we're, we're wholesale ripping off this idea, but it, we, we have permission to rip it off. What are you going to do? Sue us? Never mind. <laughs> oh, Kevin, how I've missed you. <laughs> and on that note, Dallas, how yeah. about you uh, kick, a, kick off the weak connection portion of this podcast? Yeah, so for my weak connection, I'm looking at the uh, the scene, couple scenes uh, where Achilles uh, kind of steps out from what he's got going on. Uh, we know we, we we assume watching it. There's a reason why he's in this contract, why he's fighting. There's a purpose. He's supposed to get something out of this situation. Um, and there's a couple points where he has he's set up for what he wants, but he decides to step out of that for a greater good. Uh, when he's fighting with uh, uh, Alexander in the first end, he sees this rocket punch flying through the air, going towards these bystanders, and he jumps in front of it to try to save as many people as he possibly can. Um, and then later, he's got what he wants. He's out of the out of the everything. He doesn't want to do anything else. But then he sees somebody, he sees Athena, she's about to put herself in danger, and he's like, what good is it for me to have, to have what I want right now and see this happen? He realized that allowing these people to die, allowing these things to take place in front of him was going to probably hurt him more spiritually and emotionally than just getting what he wanted and it took me to a verse um mark chapter 8 verse 36 for what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul and within there's a lot of conversations you can have about this verse but it really boils down to this you know we all have our ambitions we all have our things that we want to do um you know um that they're, some of them are good things. They're, they're positive things. You know, we want to make a certain amount of money to take care of our families. We want to do this. We want to do that. And these are great things. And we try to do stuff to achieve these things. But what good is it to achieve all these things if spiritually we're, we're sacrificing something big? We're hurting ourselves on the inside. There's a lot of great things that I want to do through geek devotions and stuff like that that I want to put out there. But if I try doing everything, I'm going to sacrifice a lot of other things for while trying to do something good. I mean, that's not good, <laughs> you know? And so my encouragement to you guys is examine what you're doing and ask yourself this, what is that God actually wants for you? Like, what has God called you to do? What does he have in front of you? And then lean into that, focus on that. Yes, make steps, make plans to go forth and do what you need to do and, and accomplish things, but don't move away from what he has you called you to do, from the identity he's given you. Because if you do that, you try to do everything else, you're going to forfeit something far more precious than you expect. And so that is my weak connection. Kevin, do you have a weak connection? No. Yeah, neither do I. I was racking my brain on this one. I thought, well, maybe Dallas will be able to inspire something into me. And then I got nothing. <laughs> I think the Holy Spirit is saying you shouldn't be watching this. <laughs> now remember kevo we bottom shelved it we didn't dumpster fire it so i know but still sometimes god looks down on me it's like oh why why <laughs> <laughs> well cool beans thanks for sharing that pastor dallas mora uh where can people find you apart from the bottom shelf uh, you can find me at geekdevotions.com where you'll find everything else we do, <clears throat> including uh, our other podcast that this is being broadcasted on, the Gundam Watch, where uh, Branson, John, a couple of folks come together to watch Mobile Suit Gundam. We're going through uh, various series right now. 
Um, right now, we have a segment where John Branson and hopefully when we can, my sister Demara are going through mostly Gundam Wing. John and I are going through uh, The Witch from Mercury. And then we're going to sprinkle in some other stuff here and there within that. And the whole idea is I've watched Gundam all my life and I love it. And I have friends who have not. And so we're just kind of going through it together. And uh, and I'm so proud of you, John. Uh, for those listening, John has made his first big step into the Gundam fandom. Oh, and geez. he's bought <laughs> his first Gunpla. I'm so proud of you. I'm so excited of you to, to take the step to build your own Gundam. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to see uh, how far your weavification goes. I- <laughs> It, it, I've been running down this rabbit hole. Kevin's got a look of permanent disappointment on his face right now. Well, Kevo, where can people find you when they're not listening to the bottom shelf? Look in the show notes. All right. With that happy comment, you can find me in any of my projects listed in the link tree below. Two I'm going to highlight, though, this week. Uh, one being Gundam by Gaslight, which is a... Gospel by Gaslight. Whatever. Dude, Gundam by Gaslight, though. Think about that. <laughs> Bro. Branson, Sounds like something I should gaslight. Branson, if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gospel by Gaslight, excuse me. That is an audio drama that all three of us, Kevin, Dallas, and myself, have been a part of. It's one of my favorite shows to listen to. On Man, this last episode was so good, too. It was. Um, so go check that out. And then also, please check out Playing Games with Strangers, which is a, an actual play Dungeons and Dragons podcast where me, uh, Dallas's wife, and a bunch of other friends hang out and play D&D and act goofy in a land of make-believe. So with that being said, does anybody have anything else to say before we shut it down for the week? I will say this. I am so excited to have Kevin back on board the ship. I've missed you, Kevin. And I cannot wait to get into far more adventures with you, good sir. Yay. <laughs> that sounds so exciting. <laughs> I was going to yeah. say something creepy, but then I decided not to. So we're, we're just going to go ahead and close that down for the evening, everybody. Happy Hanukkah, joyous Kwanzaa, Merry Christmas, and all the other glorious, lovely yeah, holidays wait, you're probably wait. celebrating. I got it. I got it. What? I want everybody out there to have a very happy Christmas Hanukkah. Yeah. Good night. <laughs>